Right. Let me bring in a uh, lawyer. Uh, so that he also give us maybe yes. his side of the history and then we can come into the studio. Okay. Uh, lawyer Kletus Avoka, thank you for your time once again. Um, uh, do you agree to the history <coughs> background uh, provided by doctor who calls you his uncle or something like that? <laughs> uh, thank you, Annie, and good evening to the panelists and then my very good brother, uh, Dr. Isa Moro. Mm. I certainly disagree with his analysis. But before I go into it, let me correct one impression that is on your screen there. Uh, it reads that the Boko skin in limbo. I just read it there, that Boko skin in limbo. And with the greatest respect to you, Boko skin is not in limbo. Um, Boko uh, skin I, has a chief. I, I don't know what, what Boko skin in limbo, where on the screen? Yeah, it was there. Yes. It was there. Okay, yeah, on so, the screen, yes. Okay, so can they pull it down? Yes. The box is still in limbo. Um, yes. Uh, producers, please Bokus be careful what you it's write. It's not in limbo. Yes. It's please, not. I beg you. Be careful yes. what you write on the screen. Now, Bokus what I have in the mo our monitor, so I don't know what's going on outside. So, please, uh, producers, Boko skin is not in limbo, in fact. Yes, so it's kind not in limbo. Yes. So, can there you pull is, it down? Let's put there it There is a current Boko Nava who is the paramount chief of Kusauk. He is registered at the traditional council by law. He is registered in the Upper East Regional House of Chiefs. Okay. He is registered in the National House of Chiefs. And he has been uh, gazetted. So, and, and he, so he has been a chief since 1984. So the Boko skin is not in limbo. That's the first correction. Apologies for that. I'm not screen. sure. I, I don't know what's going on, on on the outside screen. All I have is a monitor. So sorry for, for, for that. Thank you. Very well. Very well. All right. Very well. Yeah, but your 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 mm -hmm. view would have seen it there, and I want to make a correction that there is a current Bokunaba mm. by law, and anyone who challenges him is challenging the law and not the Bokunaba. Mm. Let me commend your two panelists. They have been they have approached the the issue in a very matured <laughs> manner, mm. and then uh, I want to say that uh, my friend and brother Dr. Isa Moro is living in the past with the greatest respect. He still talk about colonialism. All what he's saying is colonialist claims that he's making and nothing real. Let me state that, admittedly, if Boku has a conflict, it affects Ghana. Boku is strategically located. Boku shares a border with two neighboring countries, Burkina Faso and then Togo. And Andy, quickly, has... before my uncle continues, I would like to caution him on the use of words, I respect him so much. But using words like I'm living in the past, honestly, I don't take lightly to that. Okay. To be honest with you. Okay. Uh, yes. um, let, let's call cool her. Yeah, I'm that, yeah, okay. I'm saying that your, your, your whole story is based on colonialist claims. That's what I'm saying. Mm. That one is not an insult. It's colonialist claims. I talk about Nagbe Wai, I talk about Ya, Na, and then Mampurugwe and whatnot and whatnot. That's why I need asked you that what you are saying now, whether they are still relevant in modern day Ghana, that is what the, uh, the host asks you, whether what you are saying now is still relevant in modern day Ghana. Suffice it to say, however, Annie, that Kusasis are the original settlers of Boko. And the Kusasi state has six constituencies or six administrative districts now. You have Garu, <laughs> you have Timpani, you have Pusga, you have Boko itself, you have Binduri, and you have Zebila, where I am the MP. These are Kusasi areas. And Boko is the administrative capital of our, of our, 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 our traditional area. How did the Mapuji come to Boko? We have it on record. In fact, Annie, if I meet you tomorrow, and even your panelists, there is one document that summarizes everything. A committee of inquiry was set by the colonial governor in 1957 to ascertain the claims of the Mampuses and the uh, Kusasis as to who are the legitimate and rightful owners of the Boku scheme. <coughs> the committee found in favor of the Kusasis that Boku is Kusasi land, that the Mampuses came to Boku during the Trans-Saharan trade. That was a very busy trading period. From the south, they will bring gunpowder, then drinks, cloth, etc., and come to Dambaga. 
They will come and settle there. The traders will come there and settle. Then Nairi will get people to escort them through Boku. Mm. And then from Boku, they will go to Wakadugu and then Tinkurugu. Mm. On, can, 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 can you look into your camera on the, on the laptop? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, great. That direction. Uh, thank you is, very much. Yes. On the return, on return, they will bring mm. slaves and then the horses, etc., from <coughs> through Boku to Gambaga and then to the south. The history has it that the Kusasis used to waylay these traders in Boku. The Kusas. He is reading from a screen, so please um, bear with him. All of them have documents they are dealing with. So please, um, and producers, please do not um, make this work any more difficult. So kindly reconnect him um, and then let's, let's continue. I know that you're having difficulties, but please bear with him. If Zoom, once the image is there, it's okay. Viewers can appreciate uh, from that angle. Um, um, Honorable Avocat was making a point, but he's off. We'll get him back. Okay, okay, I'm told he's back. Uh, I don't remember. Sorry. Yeah, thank yes. you. Sorry about that. So let's let's go ahead. Yeah. Mm. Yes. So I, I was making the point that uh, the Mampuris came to Boku when when the Nairi asked them to come and protect the trade route because the Kusa used to lay away, lay them in Boku and seize their west, either coming from the south or coming from the north. And th that is why the Mampuris came to Boku just to protect the trade route. And they were not used over Kwisasis. The Kwisasis had their own way of ruling themselves, by Tindanas and then also by uh, landlords, clan heads. That's why they didn't have who kings, were a uh, group. Uh, kings or chiefs. chiefs. That's why they didn't have a centralized chief, like they had in Mampurugo, they had in uh, Dagbong, <coughs> and they have in uh, Yabon, the Yabongora in Gonja. The Kwisasis didn't have that. And that was not only peculiar to the Kwisasis, it was peculiar to all the tribes in the Upper East and Upper West regions. The Frafras, the Kassini Nankanis, the Dagabas and the rest of them are a selfless group. So that was how but we, we had all, our own traditional rulers in the form of Tindanas and clan heads. So when Anayiri sent his boys to come and demand the trade route, they only ruled themselves. They were in charge of themselves. Then suddenly the white man came <coughs> to Nadirubu and proceeded to Boku. At Nalerubu, he had seen that the whole Mampurisi kingdom was under Nayiri. He had seen that in the Odona sector, the whole of Dagbon was under Yana. He had seen that the whole of Gonjas was under Yabungura. When he proceeded to Boku, he wanted to see one chief in charge of every Kusasio area, where none was existed in that capacity. So, because he had settled in Gambaga, he proceeded to Boku, Mampurisi princes, interpreters, cooks, and they sent him to the house or to the community where the Mampurises were there as protected the trade route. So the, the white man added them those powers and they became chiefs over Kwisasa area. Mm. In fact, the Nairi was declared paramount chief over the whole of Kwisasa area, Frafra area, Kassini Nankara area, and Mursa. Mm. So it wasn't only Kwisau. It is not true that Nagwewa and, uh, and, and all other, uh, 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 the other uh, ancestors have been coming back to Kwisga to sacrifice. It's not true. I am 70 years old plus, and I have not seen anybody come from a uh, northern region to come and sacrifice anything at Kuzga. In any case, there is no Mampusi uh, chief in Kuzga since time immemorial. So that was what happened. So in 1956, the Mampusi Bokunaba died. And the Kusai have been agitating and struggling to, for self determination, for independence, just like Kwame Nkrumah and were fighting for independence for mm -hmm. Ghana. So, but this was a local slogan independent. Of, yeah, Nkrumah's slogan of independence now, in the shortest possible and uh, now, and not in the earliest possible time, like the UP and the rest of them, caught with the Kwisasis, some of them who are returned from First and Second World Wars, and some of them who were educated. So they were fighting through constitutional means, through lawful means, until the last one, Prince of Boko Nava died in 1956. In 57, the Mampurises, June 57, the Mampurises went to Dalerugu so that the Nairi would enskin them. While they were there, the Kusasi gathered in Boku and elected the Karen Boku Navas father as a chief. The colonial governor, Lord Listowell, then said that, look, 
I cannot arbitrarily recognize a Kwisasi man or an Ampriza chief. Let me set a committee of inquiry to ascertain the claims of the two parties. Mm -hmm. So he said the Opoku Fara committee to investigate. The other two members were the then uh, 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 Domahini, Nana Ajimandua, mm -hmm. then Tumuku Kuro, Luru Canton II. The they, together with Opoku Fara from the Volta region, went to Boku and went into the matter and concluded that, in fact, the Mampris were settlers in Boku. They came to protect the trade route. And that, that for the interference of that, that Nairi and then the white people, the Kwisazi would have developed their, their Tindanes and clan heads into normal chief, and we know them today. Mm -hmm. And in 1934, the Boku never didn't control it until 1934, when DC Sign, DC Sign brought all the chiefs from the, the six areas. The Kwisazi area divided into two traditional areas or two geographic areas, Tonle, Zebula area and then Nagole. The, the, the white man said that I'm in Boku, I cannot go to 20, 18 miles and do work. I cannot go to Agole 18 miles. So you all come together and elect the Boku Nava, accept the Boku Nava as your, your paramount chief, your leading chief. The Kusa gradually did that. So the Boku Nava became uh, Kusasi, uh, head of Kusasi chief and Boku Nava. How can a non prison man be head of Kusasi chiefs? And if I can come in quickly, just to just to just to set no 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 set, no yes, no, doc, no, no, doc, no doc, please hold on. If you can mute docs, my okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So, thank you. So if I have the document, the committee of the inquiry report, we cannot really to get the history or rewrite the history. Annie, I will give you a copy of the committee of inquiry report. Boko affairs. I have it in my hand here. I will give it to you tomorrow and your panelists. The summary of the Kusak state is there. The chief transit matter is there. After the committee found in favor of the Kusak the man police were aggrieved and went to the high court. At that time, the high court called the divisional court. And they went there for certiorari to quash the committee decision and the governor general's white paper. The technical aspect they let me explain to your panel and yourself is that the committee, the white paper, the committee report said that Abu Raka has been elected chief of Kusak area. And then in the white paper, the colonial governor said he had been elected Boku Nava and chief of Kusas area. So when they went to the high court, that time called the divisional court, they accepted that and quashed the committee's uh, of a quarter decision and that of the white paper. Then the, the committee member and the Kusasis went to the court of appeal. In 1958, we have the judgment, and it is also reported in the constitutional books of Ghana. The court of appeal presided over by the chief justice, Sir Akukosa, Granville Sharp, and one other said that look from the evidence it's not contested that the kusas are the descendants of the boku skin and the abogorago uh, azoka descendants are the rulers of the boku skin and therefore in 1932 all the kusas met and made the boku nava head of kusas area and also boku nava and that the term boku nava and head of kusas area were mutually inclusive and not exclusive as was held by the high court and therefore the court of appeal affirm the committee of inquiry decision that the Kusas are the original owners of Boku and therefore they are supposed to be chiefs. Court of appeal, that was the highest court of the land at the time. The man people never want to refer to that court, but it is, it is, it is a court of appeal decision. Was and it, it was, is reported. Was that decision... This was the status quo. Wait, what, the was army, that, this was the status quo until 66. Was that, was 66, that decision uh, that at the appeal two court? Of Kuma and then these two, the Kusas chiefs, arbitrarily. Oh. That is the problem. But PNDC came in 1983 and then passed PNDC law 75, saying that if the Kusasi were installed through due process, through committee of inquiry, through high court, through court of appeal, how can you come and pass a decree just instituted without any reason? And therefore, PNDC law 75 restored the Kusasi chiefs to the status of the 1958 court of appeal decision. Okay. This is what happened. Okay, honorable. Uh, then finally, in 2003, my, honey, just me laugh. And if second. I can come in, I will lose track of the, the, the arguments <laughs> being no, no, released. I'm just telling you the yes, chronology. And in 2003, okay. the man police went to the Supreme Court, actually claiming inter alia that Boku is for man priests. No Christmas man can be chief of Boku and whatnot and whatnot. When they called the chief, the, the case, the man police said that their lawyer, I was there that day, their man police lawyer had filed a notice to continue their action wholly. And when the Supreme Court just asked him why he brought all those chiefs from Nalergo, from Boko and whatnot, and what is continuing the matter, he said, when they read Boko Nava's lawyer's defense, they have no legs to stand. 
And the Supreme Court judge asked them, you have no lawyers to stand today. You have no legs to stand today. And you think you have legs to stand tomorrow? Don't you think there might be an end to litigation? Haven't you seen the attachments? And they ruled that, yes, you are at liberty to withdraw your petition, your case. But you have no right to come under PND's law, or under the Constitution of 1992, to challenge the current Bokuna about Boku scheme. That is the status quo. What is happening in Bokuna is criminality. There's no chief dancing matter. Hmm. And if All I right. may pick up.